forward. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Typical Skeptic Podcast. I have a really awesome guest with me today. Uh, I met her off of Facebook and I have with me Olivia Ezayana. She's um, from Poland, but she's currently living in Germany. Um, Olivia was born as an indigo child with contract, contact of planetary and cosmic, cosmoversal service. Ever since she began this incarnation, she's always had a feeling that this reality is much more extraordinary than we could ever imagine. A couple years ago, Olivia experienced a spontaneous third eye awakening, which allowed her to perceive other realities that guided her towards assisting other people in awakening their ancient gifts. Olivia is assisting others through individual sessions by releasing trapped energy and clearing any inorganic blockages that are stopping them from reaching their full potential and helping them establish their individual connection with their eternal self. The main objective of her sessions is not the typical healing facilitation, but realizing that you are your own healer. Thus, you are the one that makes the change. Olivia is the founder of the Plasma Regenesis Masterclass, where she teaches about a new type of energies that have become accessible on the planet lately, which were referred to as the flames of Ura. Uh, yeah, organic, organic frequencies of eternal creation that enable us rapid connection to the eternal self-identity. Wow, that's so interesting. Um, Olivia, thanks so much for coming on my show, and uh, how are you? Thank you for inviting me, Robert. It's wonderful that we managed to uh, connect. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know that we were supposed to do it in July, but then it's like the timing was crazy. I would say that July was an extremely um, intense month, and month energetically. I was traveling as well, so it's been very interesting. But a little bit about myself, um, or my, more like a little bit more, since it's my first time on your platform. Where do I start? Uh, there is one word that you twisted a little bit, and it is the flames of urea. Basically, um, it's a pretty important aspect of my work, and maybe I will start with this one. Where I would say that my awakening has started in quite an interesting way. I didn't write that down in my bio, but it actually started with almost like an identity crisis feeling like the darkness starts to take over. It's kind of like being all the time in this dark room and not knowing where to go. And there was a certain moment where something started to shift in me. Basically, I've been suffering from very extreme headaches and kind of like chronic pains going all over my body as and as I later managed to find out, it's been a result of different frequencies that were trying to run through my body smoothly, but most of my energy, energy circuits have been shut down due to the abductions I experienced during the childhood. So the reason why I am a healer is because I started with healing myself. And that's kind of what I would recommend to everybody. If you want to be a healer, start with yourself and then you can heal others, right? See, I've heard it the other way around. I've heard that um, people can usually heal others, but they have a hard time healing themselves, you know? Yes, that's a problem. But actually, I would say that you yourself, you're the biggest challenge because I come across many psychics coming to me, to me and being like, well, you know, I can read other people's fields and detect any kind of entities and distortions. But I have a very hard time discovering what is the problem with me. And very often what happens with most healers is that they kind of end up seeing different distortions in other people's fields, whatever that is, whatever their speciality is. But they don't realize that they are seeing themselves in others because we keep reflecting ourselves. And that may change once you actually make a certain certain shift within you. And that's when everything opens up just beautifully. So I would say that there's many healers out there that try to help others, but at the same time, they are subconsciously or sometimes even unconsciously trying to find a way to help out themselves. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one thing I wanted to back up on, I wanted to you to talk about a little bit was... Uh, you said you experienced abductions when you were young. Like, what was going on? I, w I was going to say, you you can't be that old now. How old are you? Maybe 25? Um, you know, on my first interview, which was over a year ago, somebody asked me how old I am. And I said, let it be a mystery. That's the same answer. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, I mean, you look pretty young, so that's good. I mean, I mean, we need more young people to embrace the healing arts and the UFO, UFOs and stuff like that. But you said you went through abductions when you were young. Yes. Like, what, 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 how, was it by the greys or what? Yes. So basically, I rem I have those memories as, as a child where, you know, the colors were so much brighter. And it's kind of like you're this little child the world seems to be so huge but at the same time you feel like you're an organic aspect of it and you can see all those beautiful things happening around you i have that experience where suddenly it was like very sunny and i was in my garden and suddenly i started seeing those colorful orbs of light and so like maybe as a four-year-old i just started to like come up to them and just like trying to jump and catch them into my hands and that was like a very beautiful experience. And then it all kind of got shut down. I had a dream where I was swallowed by a dragon. And right now I would kind of understand it as a blessing that there's been this aspect of me that was kind of taken by that dragon. But at the same time, it was taken from my body so that other entities don't take it away so that I can pick up this aspect of me when the time is right, if that makes sense. But what happened with the abductions is that the issue was that they kind of knew that I was coming and they wanted to basically block certain aspects of my nervous system in order to prevent me from accessing the knowledge I managed to come to right now. Wow. So, yes. So it's been like a very interesting journey because actually I discovered that abduction at the age of 15. So that was like about 10 years later where I come to that moment where I'm like, well, I remember myself with that full joy as a child, but I remember that at some point I just woke up and I lost it. And then I was just afraid of the darkness and everything was just so strange. Like this world started to feel like it's not my place. And it still feels like it until today, because obviously after going, you know, through different uh, sorts of awakenings, nothing feels the same anymore. But I would say that what many of us have missing are those aspects of the inner child that may be lost through the abductions. Because one thing to be aware about the abductions is that if you have very little memories of your childhood, if there are just some pieces that you don't remember, for example, you don't remember a moment like from at the age of six up to the age of eight. Well, what's been happening during that period? And that's something that you need to, that's an aspect of your memory that you need to unlock and retrieve. And then you might find out that you even spent two years in another dimension, right? Wow. Different stories like that. Do you, do, you, do you hear stories from people like that or did that happen to you? So for me, um, that happened within a single night, that abduction where they basically inserted different implant networks into my brain. And that put me into like a very low state of energies, which allowed for some entity trying to hijack my body. And once that happened, I started to get those very intense pains because my body at the same time was resisting. So I managed to figure that out and then take this entity out of me but um yes I've heard many stories like that um there's been this one lady um that I've been working with for a while now and she remembers this moment and she was about like 19 years old she was at the beach and it was very dark she was just there with her friends and suddenly she's looking at the ocean and at the night sky and there's almost like some kind of you know those like kind of like lights starting to flash as if it's almost like a spaceship or something and it's kind of coming closer and then she literally like blinks her eyes as if she lost her consciousness for a moment and she was standing face towards the ocean but the next thing that she remembers is that she's standing backwards and what happened is that basically those entities took her on that spaceship and she was there with them for 20 years because that's how they can play with the timelines. 
Wow, wow. Was she was she was there for 20 years and what did you, I mean his time moved differently when you're on the ship? Like is is 20 years there like he moved until like one day here or something like that? You know, the way that I perceive it is that time is absolutely simultaneous. So the reason why some people keep going through the traumas all over again is because they keep living through them. So let's say you experience some trauma at the age of nine. So there's an aspect of your energy, an aspect of your consciousness that is on that timeline when you were nine. And so it keeps projecting that trauma to your current experience. So the way that it works with the abductions is that they can easily manipulate time. There are all sorts of time portals in this universe. And as long as they know how to use them, they can easily suddenly shift within seconds to kind of like a timeline which goes like 1,000 years ahead of ours. And then they can easily come back as well. So there's a certain mechanics behind it. And I would say that quantum physics is trying to discover it, but it's very far towards actually realizing how time works, that everything happens at the same time. So when people talk about ascension, the goal is we are bringing all aspects of our identity into this present moment. Because when we think about manifestation, and actually if you want to ascend, you have to pretty much make it happen. So you need to bring as much of your energy quantum that is split throughout multiple timelines. You need to bring it into this present moment in order to make it happen. Does that make sense? It's yeah, basically how, how they interplay that? with the timelines. Yeah, but how do we do that? Like, we have to access multiple timelines then? Yes. And that's where and that's where the plasma body comes to the game. So we are talking about the light body, right? We've, you've got the astral body, emotional body, mental body. All of those, all of those different body layers, they are, com they are basically um, a composite, almost like a cluster that creates a full 15-dimensional light body structure. So it's as if you have yourself on every single dimensional level. From my perspective, we live in a 15-dimensional universe. But at the same time, we can think, how do I access those other timelines? And that's where a certain body layer that is not really talked about much comes to the game, and it's referred to as the plasma body. The plasma body, basically, what is plasma itself? Plasma is the pre-light. Light has a certain template behind it, and it is the plasma. So that means that if you have your own plasma body, you're holding a template that has the power to kind of rewrite your light body structure if it got reversed. And in our case, our light bodies are holding a lot of reversals. So the goal is that your plasma body can travel between timelines because it's basically kind of like a pre-template for all of your different light bodies and identities that exist throughout the various space-time locations. So what I'm doing on my personal sessions and also what I'm teaching on my plasma regenesis classes that I'm starting in a month is that you are already a voyager through space and time. So that means that once you get to activate your plasma body template, you can send your consciousness back and forth through the future into the past, and your plasma body has the power to reintegrate all those different aspects of yourself and bring them back to the present moment. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, so it's almost like time traveling, but like with yes. your mind. With your mind, you, you could say so. There's, you know, there's one significant thing about the plasma body and also something referred to as the eternal body, the urea body. Um, if you look at it this way, that we have this one source from which everything is coming from, right? That's basically like a main statement for most of the spiritual communities that there is one source field. If you look at it this way, the source, you are the expression of the source, so am I and all the other life forms in this universe. So what happens is that the source is basically choosing to express itself, itself through various experiences. So actually, there is nothing outside of the source. 
the source is only experiencing the inside of itself. So the source is having an internal experience. And with your plasma body, your plasma body is located inside of your physical body. So when we kind of say that we need to go inside of ourselves, it's about connecting with those primal templates. Because you could do the astral body projection, but there's so many dangers coming from it, right? You could get trapped in different fields. That could be somebody literally kind of trapping you and taking your quantum away. That's something that I keep seeing constantly. But once you start to work with your internal body, which is the plasma body, and also your eternal body, because you've got this holy trinity, you start to go beyond those different dangers that are in the astral plane and you're kind of going beyond the dimensionalization because I would say that many of the spiritual communities focus a lot on the light body mechanics forgetting that there is something beyond it because if we have so many distortions in the chakras or in your auric fields or in different meridians and stuff there needs to be a certain divine template that can help you realign it and that's where this internal and eternal bodies come to the game. Does that make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, that's interesting. So, uh, how do we do this? Like, what do we, or wherever you want to go next? Like, um, what else do you think we need to know? It sounds interesting. I would say that, again, we kind of forget that we we have all the answers within ourselves and even though that may sound pretty obvious we often reach out to various spiritual guides and that's also what i've been doing for a long time until i came to a certain realization that all the knowledge is within you and again that's what this plasma eternal body is related to that you've got a certain core a certain zero point within your body that connects you directly to the source field. So as yeah. long as you start to work on developing that connection to your core, everything becomes much easier because whenever you work with spiritual guides, you need to make sure they are working in your highest interest, right? After all, there could so many, there could be so many entities cloaking and trying to deceive. Um, I also personally have a little bit I have a little bit of doubt when it comes to working with angels and archangels. I would say we really don't need them um, since we are much more powerful than they are. So my, my main goal when I work with people is basically each one of us has to find our own, our own eternal self connection. That's basically um, the main thing that I am focusing on, assisting everybody with releasing any kind of blockages that may be stopping them from connecting to their eternal core self, because that's what we need to focus on right now. I would say that for centuries, ever since Atlantis, we would look into different teachings that would always connect us to a certain being, but we forgot that the biggest gift that we have is that eternal core connection. That's interesting. And how did this all happen for you? I read it in your bio. It said that you were, uh, you had a third eye, you had a spontaneous third eye awakening. And then all of a sudden you were allowed to, you were able to perceive parallel realities. Like did this happen obviously after the abductions when you had this third eye awakening and was there something that like brought it on? So theoretically I was, I was born with that ability, but as I said, due to what happened to me when I was four, um, this got shut down. But there was a moment when I would say that I always had a very vivid imagination, but I had no clue that it can be associated with a very good inner vision. Um, and there was this moment when, and I have like very vague memories from that, but I remember that I woke up one day and I was like, well, I just need to figure it out and I need to figure it out today. <laughs> It just felt like it was the right time. And so I was in my room and somehow I was guided to like put the curtains down and it was really dark. And I suddenly felt that there's this being inside of me. 
and I need to get this being out. And as I started getting it out, basically by taking very deep breaths and kind of like using my internal light to push it away, I literally saw it in front of me and I don't, I didn't know what to do because I, I was spiritual, but there's been not really anything I've been connecting with. And so I just started asking for help and I saw this light being just pushing it away through a portal. And that was like the first vision that I had basically of this being getting out of my body since it's never been invited there on the first place. And that light being basically, um, taking it away and after that it's as if something shifted within me and I suddenly started picking up on things maybe that's the easiest way to explain it um I started seeing different beings coming to my room and that's where I managed to understand that these are those fears that I used to have at night and suddenly this you know, the way that I described to you, the way I saw it as a child with the colors being so bright and everything kind of being interconnected on the entire planet, that feeling came back. And speaking of the time traveling, there was this month of my life and that was like about six months after I experienced my third eye awakening or more like my eternal eyes, I prefer to call it this way. Um, since they are eternal and nothing can reverse them at all. Um, there's this moment, there's this move that I just didn't remember at all. And then I suddenly started healing other people. And what I managed to figure out with the help of my friend, because that's been like almost like a blank page. I just had no clue. Um, I've been reconnecting with that aspect of myself that was in Lemuria, in Hawaii. And that aspect of myself was actually like a very skilled healer. And I was receiving trainings out there. So it's kind of like I went back to, to, to my past to get to know who I was, what I was doing. I received my training there. And then it's kind of like I came back. And suddenly I just knew what to do. And it kind of started with the ability to tap into other people's etheric templates and being able to perceive different sorts of energetic, energetic characteristics that they have in their fields, then kind of being able to tap into like the origin of their soul. And as I was going on, going with that last year, I finally de start, decided to start my classes through which I can also help other people directly get an access to this knowledge. This is fascinating. Yeah. This is fascinating because like I think now's the time it seems like more people's uh, abilities are coming online. Do you feel the same? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm seeing that among people as well that um, like sometimes it takes just a few blockages kind of to remove and then they start to pick up on things themselves. And that's actually a very fascinating process. There's also a lot of children that are being born with a lot of different gifts and sometimes they just have no idea where it's coming from. They may kind of like see themselves going out of the body. Um, there's been a friend telling me about that. Her cousin suddenly has those moments when she's coming out of the body and she can kind of see herself like watching her body from the ceiling. And she's like, what is going on? Um, so so we are indeed in, a, in, I would say, we live in interesting times where our abilities are coming online and that's why develop, developing that eternal self-connection is very important these days so that we have the right type of guidance to work with. Yeah. Because uh, mm -hmm. I was going to say, you know, you move, help remove blockages from people. Like I felt like I've had an energy blockage. I, I, I explained it to you. I, I had a, um, I was having, I went through a bad breakup and uh, it, I, it manifested like a liver pain, like three months after I, broke up with my ex-girlfriend like I, I manifested like a pain in my liver and then like I was having my friends who are energy healers heal it and it was it was taking the pain away 
but then it, the pain would come back. And then someone just told me the other day that they said there's levels to the there's levels to the energy body. They said they might have been only healing the physical where you have to get down to like this certain level to heal to actually heal the energy body. You know, because I went and got all kinds of tests through mainstream medical and they couldn't find anything wrong with me. You know what I mean? But uh, the pain still existed. It would finally went away. It was like, you know, but um, do you help remove blockages from people too? So first of all, the reason why this liver pain kept coming going is because I would say that your ex-girlfriend kept attaching to you, attaching to your energy field. And she was holding aspects of your quantum. Also, when it comes to, does that make sense? It's as if she kept stealing your energy and holding it for herself. And at the same time, just kept connecting more and more cords in order to um, to drain even more. And you I would think say- Is that advanced? Some... She can do that? Or... Yes, she can do that. Yes. I would say that there's some demonic aspects that are projecting through her. Wow. So, yes. And now the point is that when you're in a relationship with someone, you are obviously blending those energy fields together. And what happens is that all of the energy blockages, all of the karmic imprints that she has are being transferred to you. So it would be good to check, for example, if she doesn't have any liver uh, diseases in her family line, because that could be in her ancestral imprint and that could be transmitted to you. Wow. Right? And all of those demonic energies could be also transferred. So I'm not a typical healer. I don't remove blockages from people. I show them how they remove it themselves. So I'm kind of like doing like short guided meditations through which you try to tap into your body. You try to feel what's the problem. And I'm kind of like asking questions so you, you, so you can get to the core of the problem, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I'm basing crazy. that on the work of like, I'm, I'm kind of showing everybody how they can connect with the organic plasma frequencies that are accessible on this planet and how they can use them towards their own healing. So I don't, I used to do that in the past, but I don't really like connect with anybody's field anymore. The way I receive the information is through everybody's connection to their own eternal selves. So it's kind of like, their eternal self is talking to my eternal self and I get this information. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's yeah, kind of like this way of um, of receiving the information. So yeah, there could be a lot of people projecting their negative intentions, um, attaching, and that's very often not really on a conscious level in the first place, but that's how it is. Unfortunately, we have to realize that our thoughts have power our intentions also have power. So we literally manifest it, not always on the physical level, but on other energy planes. And then you might end up with all sorts of distortions and kind of like evil eyes projected at you. For example, because you have very pure energy and other people just want to feed off from it, right? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Um, well, uh, I'm trying to think, is, that, is there anything else you wanted to cover? Uh, I'm trying to I'll go through your, uh, oh, what are the flames of your Rua? How do you say that? Can you talk about that? What are the flames of your Rua? Urea. Urea, sorry. <laughs> so, okay, how do I explain that in the easiest way possible? So as I said, we have this holy trinity. We've got the external creation which is our light body structure. We've got the internal creation, which is the plasma body structure. And we've got the eternal creation, which is the urea eternal body structure. So the flames of urea are basically the frequencies that became accessible on this planet, I would say over the past eight years. And they are basically allowing us to directly return to the source field because basically this planet suffered so many distortions. Um, it's not really able to suddenly like transcend into dimension five and, you know, it, it doesn't really work like that anymore because its core has been severely damaged. There's been a lot of different metatronic distortions. 
um, so basically there needed to be a certain hosted matrix provided for the planet. And that's referred to as the Nomi seat. The Nomi seat is basically almost like an eternal creation bubble that is located in the center of our planet, Shrikor, right at the core of the planet. And it's almost like a spark of the planet's eternal self. And we can all connect to that Nomi seat energy. If somebody is more kind of like interested to hear more about the Nomi seat, I speak a lot about it in my videos. But basically, um, the flames of Urea are bringing us directly back to the eternal planes, which are directly connected to the source field. So this planet has been almost like in a galactic quarantine for over 300 billion years, ever since the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxy split. Um, we didn't have an access to those eternal frequencies. So there's been many races coming to this planet, starting to hijack it or influence it in a negative way. And that basically led to a reversal that needed an extra support. So the flames of Urea are bringing this frequency that is indelible. It cannot be distorted. And the flames of Urea are also the organic frequencies from which your eternal body is composed of. Uh, the easiest way to imagine the flames of Urea is they, they are almost like plasma vapors. So it's kind of like a beautiful, almost like shiny mist type of thing. So that's why I'm also calling like the eternal body. I'm also calling it the shimmer body because it's kind of like a glitter layer <laughs> underneath your skin. And once you start playing with it, it can be very helpful when it comes to healing. So that's also what I've been introducing on my classes, those different aspects of the um, eternal creation. Because okay. we are eternal, we are not infinite. That's one thing to realize that there is a difference between infinity and eternity. If something is infinite, it is still in the finity. So it had a certain beginning and, and it may have no end, but it started somewhere. Eternal has no beginning and no end, right? It's kind of going beyond beyond time. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, this is very this is so interesting. Like, I, I'm 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 kind of a little bit lost, but I'm like I'm I'm trying trying to figure out like um, I I have to study I have to study your material more. I have to I have to get familiar with it because it sounds like you're doing some amazing stuff. Yep, we can definitely do this again. Yeah, it sounds like you're you're very advanced, you know. Yeah, that's that's kind of what people say when they attend on my classes that like they can sometimes like fall asleep on the presentation because there's just like so much work and so much energy is running through it that sometimes like my computer just gets heated up from the energies that I'm transmitting. So there is indeed a lot of work, but at the same time I always say that like the knowledge may be difficult to understand at first, but it all comes through practice because the meditations are easy. So the more you activate yourself, the more of the flames of Urea you embody within you, the more you will understand of that theoretical perspective that we always have like this holy trinity. And basically what is very important these days is that the light body and the plasma body are coming together. So like you've got the internal and the external coming together. The duality is being cleared and they are all coming together into oneness with the eternal body. So that's why we are receiving back this eternal life potential that has been lost for a very long time. We basically didn't have an access to those energies almost since the beginning of um, our existence on this planet. So this is something that I would say is quite profound. And um, and we can be grateful to the source that we will basically fully return to it in 200 years. Why do you say we're going to return to it in 200 years? Because that's um, basically those frequencies will be accessible over the next 200 years on this planet. Okay. So... Yes, so basically for most people, um, especially those that are kind of feeling drawn to like 
activating their eternal bodies and stuff or more like connecting to their core self for most of them this will be their last incarnation because they will be able to finally get out of this incarnational loop and ascend somewhere else because the reason why there's we are kind of stuck in this endless incarnational cycle is because there's this frequency fence around the planet Yes, I've and heard this frequency it. fence is not allowing for those souls to get out. It's almost like we are imprisoned. And now those eternal frequencies, they are not, we are not just like on a personal level. We are not just activating them on a personal level, but also on the planetary level. So that means that the planetary grids are being filled in with the flames of Urea. And that's finally allowing for this frequency fence to be progressively released over the next few decades. So that we could have like a beautiful ascension path all the way back to where we came from. Wow. Well, this has been amazing. Um, is there anything else you wanted to say before we finish up for today? Oh, good question. You know, I was like in a flow of speaking, as I told you, once I start, it's difficult to make me stop. Um, thank you so much for inviting me. I would say that's been very interesting. And I must say I have quite a lot to share when it comes to that story with the liver you told me about but maybe we can do it after the recording <laughs> anyways um i would say we definitely must do it again thank you so much for inviting me and i hope that those who are listening i hope that you found it interesting and maybe it was something new yeah and and how, how can people contact you and get your services like can you tell people your website and all that stuff um how about you put it in the youtube description like my website and my facebook account I yeah, think well, it's going to be the best YouTube, way. Your YouTube, your, your your website, your YouTube and Facebook. I have them all here in the on my uh in my notes. So yeah, I'll, absolutely. I'll, I'll definitely add that. And I'd like to have you back on for a second show. That was, this was really interesting. Thank you for inviting me. It's been lovely. All right, uh, I'm gonna probably post this tomorrow. I'll send you a link when I upload it. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Olivia. Have a good night. Thank you.